So I want to start off today's meeting by opening it up to uh, to some shares, hot news. I want to give some space to you know, anybody if they're having uh, you know a biggest day or a best week or a huge order or something that you know they felt just really stood out from the past week or something they feel I could benefit the rest of the group by sharing. Yeah, uh, I could go. Yep. Sure. Go so ahead, I actually just had my, I think my biggest weekend ever, not this past weekend, but the weekend before. So pretty cool. Nice. Pretty cool. I think I sold uh, a little over 5,000 CPO, uh, like pretty much in one day. <laughs> so that was pretty cool. Cool. And uh, tell us kind of about that. Like, how did that, like, how did that break down? I assume that was an event. Tell us uh, kind of what helped you create that. Yeah. Um, yeah, it was actually, uh, my head was not quite in the right place when I first started. So I was working with uh, Frank on our team. Frank's a great guy, really good at selling stuff. And uh, it was Friday and I didn't, I just could not close an order to save my life. I had a bunch of pitches, just couldn't do it. Frank actually sold three galleys uh, on Friday. So that did not uh, start off the, the week in two grade. I'm like, all right, well, you know, I just got to keep the head up. You know, Frank can do three galleys. We can do some more. And then Saturday came about, and then I sold pretty much back-to-back -back Siggy's with steaks. And, yeah, that, <laughs> I guess my biggest takeaway was uh, just keep your head up. Sales are coming. You don't know what's – as Rick would say from Pawn Stars, you never know what's coming right behind that door. So, there you go. And would you say, uh, kind of, kind of, um, kind of the uh, competitive spirit drove you a little bit there? Oh, of course. Yeah, I uh, all friendly competition, of course. Love Frank to death, but yeah, definitely. Uh, I'm always a little competitive in my mind <laughs> when I'm uh, working with somebody or uh, from or at least myself from last year or whatever it is, so. For sure. Cool. Thank you, Seth. Mm -hmm. Anyone else got any uh, anything they'd like to share uh, about uh, some hot news, like I said, or a best week, month, day, campaign, any of that stuff? Yeah, I mean, I could share. I had, uh, can you guys hear me? Yep, we hear you, John. Yep, we hear you. Can you hear me? Okay. Yep. Um, so I, I as well had uh, biggest biggest week of the campaign. Congrats, Seth, on that. That's awesome. Uh, I think one of the things is knowing when to drop down and, like, when to customize was very helpful for me and then when customizing because i sold two custom homemakers on sunday it, it was just doing it in a way where they felt special about it uh, and then one of the things jason teaches us is utilizing free gadgets um, when you're closing but it, it's like it's not utilizing gadgets as hey adam can you mute yourself um, oh, sorry. It, it's utilizing the gadgets to kind of gauge the temperature of where you're at in the closing process. It's like, I don't know if you guys ever close and you're like, oh, I, I know I'm, I know I'm there. I know I can close this. And sometimes it's just to move it along to the next step where you know by asking which gadgets they want for free, how they respond to that is going to let me know whether or not they're uh, I'm ready to close this and ready to write up the order basically. Um, or if I need to give them more space to kind of talk it over or whatnot. So just difference in how you use that close and how you um, are using the gadgets to close. And one of the things we do is we just pull them out in front of them. And it's like, Hey, if you had to pick like a few of the gadgets, which gadgets, 
if you had to pick a few of the gadgets as a freebie, which uh, two gadgets would you pick most? And then they pick, and then I build value in those gadgets, and then I'll rebuild value in, in the package that they're getting. Um, especially if, if I'm unsure of where they're at, this way I'm ending on value. But I, I thought that was one of the things I did well this last week. Nice. <clears throat> and you said you had your biggest, you say day or week so far? Uh, it's the biggest week of the campaign. Gotcha. That was this week or the uh, prior one? I, I mean, last or was it Tuesday like through Monday? I don't, I don't know. <laughs> last gotcha. week. There you go. It's awesome. Love to hear it. And uh, just to confirm, yes, that is definitely a, a big key if you're not using the gadgets to uh, to help with closing. I would highly recommend it. And like Josh said, you want to pick them up and like hold them in front of the customer. Don't just point to them. You know, like when you because when you pick them up and like put them in front of their face, it like creates like urgency, and it's like oh they got to pick. And then. Um, Kind of just to add to what he said, you don't have to explain every single gadget because they've already taken on a bunch of information at this point. Just explain whichever two they pick, and then that saves you like an extra minute and a half, two minutes by not explaining like the rest of them. Sweet. Thank you, Josh. How about Joey, Adam? Any uh, Anything exciting? Cool. Uh, <clears throat> and then uh, for myself personally, um, I am also having uh, my best spring ever. And um, what's cool is I'm able to, um, by like two months in, I think I was already beating last the campaign one from last year and I've been able to you know do some traveling as well um, and really increase lifestyle so I think uh, a big key for anyone to take away is just excuse me is uh, just to be really efficient um, whether you're you know doing appointments or doing shows whatever it is you want to maximize you know, whatever you're doing at that time versus, you know, working all the time and just kind of half-assing it. Because if you can do more with less, that frees up your time to do so much other things. Because I've been able to, you know, I went to Florida, went to Disney World, you know, went to Tennessee, gone on a, you know, a couple other, like, you know, weekends off. And I can not work a show and still sell four or five, six grand in a week, right? Uh, which is great. Um, but looks like uh, the man, the myth, the legend, Vernon is ready. Um, I'm glad we could take this time to, to get some knowledge from the group and uh, I'll, I'll turn it over to Vern and, and let him, let him speak. Oh, and by the way, uh, I don't know if, he even needs an introduction, but, you know, he sold a, a shite load of Cutco, uh, you know. So what, what is it, 1.6 or 2 million? Where are you at in career now, Vern? Uh, 1.6, 1.6, 1.7, something like that. Yep. So 1.6 to $7 million worth of Cutco. Uh, he is the number one rep in Wisconsin uh, on our team. He is a... Uh, now number two, because we added in, you know, big sky, but, you know, uh, he sold, what, 450 plus last year, right? Or what was it? Yeah, 467. Yep, 467 at Cutco. He is a master at many elements of the game. Uh, and he will be speaking on package and program sales. I'm very excited for this message as well, because I, 
I love when Vernon just out of nowhere will post in the chat like, oh, yeah, I just sold four galleys to this lady or, oh, she just bought five sets or, you know, I'm just like, damn, that's amazing. So love love to see, uh, you know, some of that. So without further ado, Big Vern. Appreciate it. <clears throat> I love this uh, video filter, by the way. I've always wanted to be on the big screen. This 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 is sweet. <laughs> way to go, Zoom. This is awesome. <laughs> the performance. Um, yeah, exactly. Um, cool. Yeah. Well. Um, yeah. Thanks for having me, Tuck. It's an honor to be on this. Um, on this awesome, uh, the, the, uh, one of the awesome uh, training calls here. And thanks for uh, showing up. And you should be thanking yourselves for showing up as well. So, yeah, like Tuck said, um, I really like and love selling packages and programs and promoting it. And over the last couple of weeks, I've been experiencing um a lot of that uh let's see it kind of started where uh like the wisconsin sports show um the customer came up right away asking for um wanting to do an upgrade and you know pitch him the upgrade basically close it he wanted it he wanted to pay for it in cash and i was like well you can but you know it's just a lot longer process for you and for me so if you could do a debit or credit card that'd be awesome he kind of hesitated. So I knew that he still wanted to pay in cash. I'm like, so you still want to do cash? He said, yes. And I was like, what are you trying to hide it from your wife or what? <laughs> and, uh, and we both laugh. He's like, no, I'm trying to hide it from the IRS. And um, so right, right there, that showed me that he was a business owner and he had a logo on his shirt. And I was like, oh, do you run a business? And he said, yes. I'm like, oh, well, I mean, if we just put a nameplate on your block, then you can write up the whole thing for uh, for taxes. It's like really, yeah. So then, like the next program I talked to him about was our business gift program. Now, if you're not certified to sell business gifts or, or realtor gifts, um, you won't be able to like really pitch this. However, you can engrave anything and sell that to a business owner, uh, but you can't sell it to like a realtor. So you could still mention our business gift program and just give them a deal on like you know ten engraved fillet knives or whatever, right? Because business owners can pretty much like write off anything. Um, every industry is different, but like, you know, when I buy gifts for my clients, you know, I don't have to have like my logo on it, right? But I tell my people like, yeah, this was a business expense, right? So same thing, but it, you can't put a logo on it unless you're certified. Um, all right. So then I told him about the business gift program. So then from his upgrade, he adds on 10 fillet knives. And then he mentions cookware because uh, he sees it on there, which is why I, I mentioned, like, put all your expensive stuff out in front, right? Um, and Tucker's mentioned that as well. So, you know, he sees the big shiny cookware display up front. So he's like, oh, tell me about your cookware. Um, so then I tell him about cookware and then he adds on the frying pan set. And then he sees the flatware, like, oh, my wife would love flatware, right? Because it's right in front and it looks good, right? So you want it there and shiny, looking beautiful. So I told him about the flatware and he's like, well, I think I'd want to have my wife kind of, you know, try it out because um, she can be particular. And I was like, well, what better way to like have her try it out than to have her try it out and use it at home. And if she doesn't love it, just send it back and uh, we'll, we will refund your money. We're obviously not sold in the store, so you can't just bring her to the Cutco store on Monday, right? And have her look at it, right? So have her use it for a few weeks and worst case, you know, ship it back and we'll refund your money. He's like, oh, really? I was like, yep. So then he adds that on. Okay. Um, so really like the, the first part of just selling packages and programs is, do you know our different packages and programs? So that's, that's the first thing. Do you know what our packages and programs are? If it's a new customer, then you have our block sets, you have our flatware, you have our cookware, you have the Cuckle Kitchen program. Um, you got business gifts, realtor gifts, our family program right? Our accessory package. So that was actually one of the other things he, he mentioned, uh, he saw, he saw like my, my gadget pack on, on, on my display board. And he's like, Oh, I really like this cutting board uh, or this cutting board, uh, this can opener. Um, how much is the can opener? I'm like, well, it's 60 bucks, but if you're open to spending a little more money, um, I can show you a package that it comes in. Cause we have a better deal on that. It's like, show me the package. So I just opened up to the accessory packages and he got the complete accessory package. So that was another $1,000 package that, that he had on. So in the midst of this, he adds on a $1,000 upgrade package and a $1,000 business gift order package, a $1,000 accessory package, 
Um, I think the frying pan set is $1,100 and then an $1,800 flatware package, right? So just knowing all these packages and just knowing what my like five to 10 second spiel on it is, and then uh, presenting that to him. Um, our outdoor knives program, right? Do you, do you like, do you have that in the back of your head? So when someone said, oh, do you have a fillet knife? Do you just sell it a fillet knife? Or do you mention that we have outdoor packages where they can save between five and 25% off, right? Um, and past customers are, are the exact same thing, but it's in the blocks. It's just our upgrade program, right? So do you know what all the packages and programs are? And do you know how to pitch them? So that'd be the second thing. What's your 10 second spiel on Cutco Kitchens? Your tech, your 10 second spiel on flatware, cookware, business gifts. If you're a CGC certified, uh, realtor gifts, um, accessories, hunting knives, right? outdoor knives, all that, right? Do you know what the 10, like your, your 10 second spiel is? And do you believe in it? Okay. I heard the other day that uh, there, there's a rep that, that says, oh, um, when someone asks about cookware, they say our cookware sucks because the rep doesn't know how to use cookware at home. So they'll literally have a person come up to the booth and like, oh, I want cookware. They're like, oh, you don't want our cookware. It sucks. And I'm like, what? <laughs> our cookware is the best cookware on the planet. My wife and I use it every single day. Oh my gosh. Transport me to that event right now, please. And I'll take that cookware order. Okay. Yeah, he needs to be fine. Um, right. No kidding. So um, are you educated on, on the different programs and do you do you believe in it? So if you don't have a piece of cookware, you know, you can buy cookware samples on Vector Connect, right? So if you don't have even like a the the three quart or two quart saucepan sample, buy that like today and start using it and record videos and show your customers of videos of you using your cookware, right? Why do you think Mike Dow would sell so much cookware? Because he's got so much social proof, it's, it's ridiculous, okay? So I can just go on my Facebook group or my Facebook page or my album on my, on my phone and I can show customers, this is how I'm using my cookware, right? My wife and I use it every single day, okay? So once you know, so once you're educated on the, the packages and programs and you have your 10 second spiel that you have on it, then you just got to know the timing of when to say everything because you don't say everything all at once. Okay. You got like, when you notice a customer has a logo on their shirt with a business, you then right away, are you asking, Oh, is that your, is that your business on your shirt? Nice. What kind of business do you have? How long have you had it? Cool. Hey, just curious. Do you do any kind of gifting for your clients, staff, employees? And they'll say either yes or no. I'm like, oh, yeah, I was just wondering because Cutco has a program where we can engrave your name, member, and logo on Cutco, and you give that as an appreciation gift. And then I can show them because I usually have at least one engraved set on my, on my table. And then that'll spark a conversation, okay? And by the way, um, there is a, there is a um, I think everyone has access to it. The, the net meeting has an amazing business gift panel with Rob Robinchek, Curtis Jacques, and, and uh, Stephen Decker. So, you know, definitely uh, listen to that, but just remember you can't put a logo on it. If you're not, if you're not certified, you can only do engravings. Um, so that's the other thing, like go back to net meeting talks and learn from the people who are the masters at, you know, cookware and kitchens and upgrades. Cause that's, that's how I get better every year is I, I learn, I listen to these talks and I implement um, you know, a line or two that I like, or I'll take time and completely revamp my, my script. So that's, that's on my to-do list. So uh, with the family program, um, you know, Brian Carter is really, really good at that. And when I was listening to one of his past talks, he mentioned, he, you know, one of his lines is, yeah, you know, like Cutco isn't, um, um, Cutco is obviously a little more expensive than your usual gift that you give to your kids. But it's probably one of the only gifts that you can give them that not only are they going to have 20, 30, 40, 50 years from now, but they're still going to be using and they're going to think of you every single time that they use it. I'm like, oh, that's a great line. Boom. Insert that. Right. So that just gets them already thinking about gifts. So as you're, you know, even when you're on service calls or you're doing service events, it's important to know all the different programs that you have. One of the last appointments I had in my service events, she was, she was basically good at what, you know, everything that she had, but I, was, I did my 10 second spiel on cookware, flatware, upgrades, gadgets, outdoor knives. And then I mentioned the family program. I'm like, hey, just curious. Do you have kids, grandkids, nieces, nephews, whatever? She's like, yeah. 
like, okay, well, hey, in a perfect world, would you ever consider giving Cutco as a gift to, you know, your kids? And she's like, I don't know. And then I say that line that I just mentioned, and then I, I whip up the family program brochure and go, you know, go through my, my actual like spiel at that point. And then now, um, so I, I think she had like five kids and I believe this is correct. I think she added on one five piece set and then we kept the other four on her wish list. Yes, I remember this now. So all we had at this point was like, I think a piece of cookware, maybe two pieces of cookware and two knives. And then all because I knew all the programs and I mentioned a family program, I added on a five piece set to my order, right? And now I have like four or five other five piece sets on her wish list in my CRM, which is basically, if you don't know what a CRM is, it's basically just a, a, a database of all your customers um, that all of us CSPs have through a company called Vast Action. So I just go into their, their, their account and put in, you know, whatever it was, five or six um, five piece showstopper sets for, for their kids. So when I see them, you know, next time I get them sharpened or when I have a sale and, you know, I call them, I can just pull up their, their account and then boom, five pieces right there, five piece sets. And she thanked me for planting a seed in her head, right? So not only did I probably at least double my order um, at that service event, but I now have more, more CPO waiting for me um, in the future. And she's looking forward to it. And she's super excited that I mentioned that program to her. Okay. Um, <clears throat> fast forward to the uh, last weekend, working in Green Bay with, with Caden. Um, you guys probably saw this in, in the chat, but when someone comes up asking for, for table knives, um, I learned this from my mentor, Brandon Brown. Okay. So I think, I think this was um, six table knives. She's like, yeah, I had like eight table knives, but I lost six of them or whatever it was. Um, how many is it for six? Okay, so table knives are 46 bucks. So I just round up to, to 50 bucks, you know, a, a table knife. Um, and I'm like, so six table knives is roughly $300. But if you're open to spending a little bit more money, we can find a package that, that comes in because all of our packages, you'll save between five and 25% off, right? And that order turned to, you know, basically went from six table knives to a basic homemaker with flatware. Okay, so... And that's because, again, I just, I knew the programs of like, okay, well, we're looking to potentially upgrade versus just get an, a brand new set of, of, of knives. And then, you know, my 10 second spiel on flatware and I had it up front and it looks good. So it attracts them to that, uh, to that. And I knew my flatware spiel, boom, right? Home make, basic homemaker with, with flatware, okay? And then this past weekend at the Wapaka Home Show, uh, business owner was like kind of inter interested in Cutco um, as as business gift. So I had an extra piece of brand new uh, red Cutco on me. So I gave him a gift, right? So I, I talked to talk or I walked to walk, right? Gave him a piece of Cutco and I said, here you go. Play with this tonight. Be careful though, right? It's really sharp. And um, like I literally get to my booth the next morning and the wife comes over and all they cut was an orange. <laughs> it was like, well, we had pizza. He's like, what am I going to cut with this thing? All we have is pizza. And she's like, well, we got some oranges. Just cut that orange. And all I remember them telling that he just put I mean, one cut of that orange. and was like, wow, this is a really good knife. <laughs> so then, um, so obviously I, I, I talk about the business gift program, uh, you know, the day before. So they add, they, they buy 12 Santoku trimmers um, on, on an order right away. And then he's, he told me that he's always, he's seen me at, the, at that show before, and he's always wanted a, a new set of, like a nice new set of knives. So I quit going to my, my, you know, set program, right? My three set clothes, and then boom, Siggy with steak knives. And then because I have wellness mats in the front, he's loving the wellness mat. So invest in a wellness mat or two and put it in front of your booth. You guys have probably saw randomly like seven set, seven wellness mats, four wellness mats. It's literally just because I have them in front of my booth. And I just say, yeah, like Cutco partnered with Wellness Mats, I don't know, five to seven years ago, because we figured, hey, when you're cooking at, uh, at your countertop with your beautiful Cutco knives, you might as well be standing on something that's super comfortable, right? So Wellness Mats is the premier standing solutions in America that's also fully American made, has a 20-year warranty, right? 
And then I just do it some more bullet points and then boom, he's like, you know what? I think this will be great for my workshop. So he, he added on um, four total wellness mats and then later on comes back. They're kind of talking about the flatware. I'm like, yep, yeah, we could totally leave it on your wish list for later. We can get it now if you want, because obviously the more you get, the better deal I can give you. And he's like, no, we're leaving it on, but you know, on the wish list. But what I'm really drooling over is your cookware, right? So boom, talk about my cookware, okay? And then same thing, like we could, you know, leave it on the wish list, no matter what. And then she says, yeah, we'll probably get this and within a few months, okay? So my next tip is like, listen to your customers, because what do we know happens in a few weeks with cookware? The prices go up, okay? So I said, hey, you could totally do that. You know, I'm not going anywhere anytime soon, but just so you know, our prices on cookware are increasing literally in like two to three weeks, like April 5th, I think it is, Okay. And up until this point, he was he was paying in full. Next week, thanks, Adam. He was he was paying in full. So that's when I talk about the easy pay. I'm like, hey, so like, I, th honestly, this is why I like the easy pay because if you if you can do it over the five months and it's not going to break the bank, you're going to save a lot of money, right? At the end of the day, I wouldn't want you to spend more money on the same exact product. Okay. So then he ends up getting the the full legacy set of cookware. Okay. Besides the walk, because we're gonna have to walk. So I think he ended up buying like seven thousand CPO for me over the weekend. Just you know, just that one guy. But that's because I just you know I know the programs and I'm always like wanting to get better at explaining them and um, making sure that I'm not you know over over talking about um, the 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 programs as well. Okay. So for example, something new that I'm doing in in my approach that they talked about at the at the net meeting is uh, when I'm talking to new customers. I'm I'm matching the, the kitchen uh, right away, which I've always done. I've always said, you know, Cutco is the premier kitchen company in America. We specialize in high end American made ki um, kitchen knives, pots and pans and forks and spoons. Right. So I do mention it. Um, but now I've, I've made it a discipline where I always have a. Um, I always had the Cutco kitchen like price sheet on my table. So like right away, that's basically one of the first things that 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 they are seeing. So they're they're seeing this like right away, okay? And they see the prices and everything right there, okay? So that's basically like right next to my um, my uh, trifold with all you know with all the three sets or whatever. So then when I'm going into them, um, I think Bert Wicks initially. Um, Talk, talked about this where I'll ask them like, hey, do you have an iPhone or, or an Android? And if they have an Android, I give them a high five. Like, yes, you're, you guys are smart people. Congratulations. They say iPhone. I'm like, I'm so sorry. You can go talk to my partner right here. Uh, <laughs> um, but no, so I'm like, so you know that when you buy um, a new Android phone, right? Like people know, you know, like Android for the phones, but when you get the the smartwatch and you get the the the, the headphones and you get you know, like the laptops and everything, everything just syncs very well together, works seamlessly in together, and it enhances your Android experience. You know, same thing with, with iPhone, but obviously Android more. Um, so same thing with Cutco, like everybody knows Cutco because of the knives, but when you get the flatware, you get the cookware, you get all the gadgets, it enhances your Cutco experience because everything is just complements each other and just works very, very well, okay? So what's cool is that, uh, we can create, we can customize your ideal Cutco kitchen, right? Where we can customize a set of knives you want. We can customize a set of cookware that you want. We can customize how many uh, sets of flatware that you need down to the gadgets, everything. Or we can do a bundle where you, where you get a set of knives with cookware or flatware, or you can start off with just knives. So if you were to do Cutco today, which way would you go? And most of them still say, well, I, we'll just start off with the knives. So then boom, go right into my three sets, my three set close. And then when I close them on a set of knives, then I'll go into, you know, cool. Well, hey, is there anything you want me to put on your wish list for down the road? Okay, gadgets, hot knives, cookware, flatware, whatever. So then if they mention flatware, or they mention cookware, boom, I'm going to go into it right away. Okay. So then, of course, you know, that's how you'll upserve someone from a set of knives to flatware or, or cookware. OK, so make sure that you know what all the programs are. And if you don't know, reach out to me or to another CSP um, on, on, on our team. 
and make sure you at least know, like you, you definitely want to know just a 10 second spiel. So when someone's like, oh, I didn't know you had flatware, you don't, you don't just vomit the whole flatware approach, right? But you just say, yeah, flatware, our flatware is great. You know, we've had it for the last 10 to 15 years. As far as I know, Mr. Jones, it's the last and only fully American made flatware that's completely guaranteed forever. It's pretty awesome, right? It's not silverware, it's 1810 stainless steel. So with, norm, with normal pressure, it's not gonna bend or break, check it out, right? It's not too heavy, it's not too light, it's just right, okay? And then I'm just like kind of reading their, their reaction, okay? One thing that's super important to do if you're if you're if you have that customer that's kind of bouncing back between knives and flatware or knives and cookware, because I've been there, I'm sure we've all been there. Something that Brandon and Brandon taught me this, right? So instead of spending like an hour with them trying to like close both both things at once and going back and forth, you, you know, just be very direct and just say, yeah, hey, just curious, what is the priority? Is it the knives or is it the flatware, right? Or is it the cookware? If they say knives are cool. Let's get you started with the knives. And then once we're good with that, I can show you some bundle packages with adding on a flatware and we can see if that works. Cool? Awesome. Then boom, right? So the focus is now 100% just on the knives, okay? And that's, and that's the same where if they, if they tell me in the beginning that they would do like a bundle deal with like, yeah, I think, you know, we could use knives and cookware, then I'm still gonna say, cool, well, let's start off with the knives. Let's get you the set of knives that you want first, right? Then tell me the set of the set of cookware that you want. I'll show you what the bundle deal is, and then you can you know we can, we can go from there. Okay, so you always want to make sure you are taking control of the situation, right? Because I've definitely been there where you know I'm talking for an hour and a half on like knives and cookware, and then I end up closing like a five piece, right? Because <laughs> like you don't want to confuse the the customer, all right? So know the programs. Know both what the 10 second spiel is on all the programs, but then actually know how to like pitch the programs. Okay. So know how to sell cookware. Know like um, train yourself on selling flatware. All right. Train yourself on selling engraved gifts. Train yourself on the family program. Okay. Um, and again, if you don't know how to do those things, either reach out or all this is on Vector Connect. If you basically just type in net flatware or net cookware, I'm sure you'll see a bunch of things. Or if you download the Cutco Events app, okay, they have audio, uh, audio recordings from uh, net 20 and 21, I think. Or if you YouTube, uh, just search Dave Bush on YouTube, right? He'll have a bunch of uh, Cutco videos from, from Cutco Events. Okay, um, but watch those 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 net videos. Okay, I'm gonna pause there. I've been doing a lot of talking. Um, does anyone have any questions so far? Uh, yeah, I got a question. All right, so um, where I'm at in my business, I'm kind of like just starting to uh, really get the hang of all the knives and everything. And I've been trying to incorporate more with like the flatware and the cookware, but uh, trying to do everything at once is a tad bit overwhelming, especially to memorize uh, like certain phrases and everything. Do you have any advice for learning? Is it like a package at a time or get the elevator pitches down first or something like that? What's your tips? Yeah, absolutely. So it's kind of like when you are a brand, brand, brand new rep, right? Like obviously like you guys only knew how to sell eight knives basically. And that was it. That was literally it. Like three days and you learn how to sell three knives or, or, or uh, eight knives and a block. Okay. And you, you knew how to cut a penny. Okay. And then after going to like SC1, SC2, like, wait, there's an ultimate set. What, what the heck is this? There's no, no one who in the world would buy this thing. Right. And then you get to the events and like, you hear Seth Kenzer, like you better sell ultimate sets or what the heck are you doing? Right. So it definitely is in stages. Uh, but I'm very stubborn. So, you know, a top CSP is like focus on one thing at a time. And I'm like, I don't got time for that. I need to know everything like right now. OK, so I just time block in my my calendar. You know, um, the most I time block for is an hour and a half. But uh, either take like a 60 to 90 minute time period. And in that time period, you're focusing on uh, your three set close. Right. Then and then during that time, uh, 
you know, so you want to script it out and then you want to role play it like by yourself, just pacing back and forth in your apartment. Then maybe the, the next time block or the next day, you have a time block for Kukko University. And that during that time, you're learning cookware. Because here's the thing. If you have all the scripts that you want, it's all scripted out and typed out, you basically just copy and paste it into your approach, right? So then as you're reading through your script, you're reading your three set close. You're reading a cuckoo kitchen approach. You have a cookware approach in there. You have a flatware approach in there. So now you're literally just reading everything and you're implementing a lot of things at once. So then it's up to you to put in the work to like script things out. Role play, role play things out, record yourself on your, on your phone, you know, doing all these things. So that by the time you show up to the booth, like you feel more confident with it. But then where the trick comes in, Seth, is let's say you get to the booth and you're not super confident on selling flatware. You can still talk about it, right? And I'm just very honest with the customer. So if I was in your shoes and someone's like, oh, I didn't know you have flatware. Can you tell me about it? Just say, yeah, I'm Mr. Jones. Now, just, you know, full disclosure, I'm like super new at, at this job. So I don't know 100% about the flatware, but hey, you love your cuckoo knives, right? Okay, it's probably fair to say you're going to love cuckoo flatware, right? It's pretty cool. Like with normal pressure, it's not going to like bend um, or anything. And I heard that ever since this came out about a decade ago, we haven't changed the design on it. So if you lose some pieces, you can replace it. And these table knives, like, check this out. It's the same, the same edge that you have, right? And it's American-made guaranteed forever. Like, that's basically all you have to say about the flatware, right? Same with cookware, right? Mr. Jones, I, you know, just to be fully, you know, transparent, like, I'm super new. I'm not 100% educated on the cookware. All I know that it's amazing stuff. And, like, we send our customers videos to teach you how to use it. And, hey, you love your cookware knives, right? Probably safe to say you would love cookware cookware. Try it out. If you need good pots and pans, you should probably go with Cutco pots and pans, right? Um, so don't try to like force yourself to like say the brand new approach if you're not 100% confident in it. Um, or hey, you can say, hold on, Mr. Jones, I don't want, I don't want to uh, screw it up. So let me let me get my approach here real quick so I can tell you everything about cookware. Why not? That's what you did in the homes. Why not? Right? Or just play a video. Just show just. Uh, screen share or download Jason Jeffrey's video on YouTube on cooking chicken. Be like, I want to say to tell you, I'll just show you how awesome these, these cook. Right. And then, you know, download or screen share Jason Jeffrey or Josh Muller cooking eggs and cook cookware. Right. You basically show those two videos and being brand new and not being fully educated on cookware, you're going to accidentally sell some cookware sets. Does that answer your, your question, Seth? Absolutely. Thank you so much. Of course. Any other questions right now? Awesome. So I mentioned that the timing of everything, right? So uh, when you're going through your, your normal approach, right? You're not gonna spew like all the different programs that we have to our customers at once. Same thing when you're on um, service calls, right? Or service events, you can like mention them, right? But you're not gonna give the whole approach at once. Everything's kind of in order. And it's all about the timing, okay? Josh Muller does have, uh, he has a rule, every program, every customer, every time, okay? And so that's the thing that I've been disciplined on as well. So I wanna make sure that when, I, when I'm when i done with the customer, like I get them sold on a set of knives, basically all I say is, hey, and just so you know, if you're ever in the market for these things, just remember that Cutco has amazing forks and spoons, you know, 10 second spiel, okay? If you're ever in the market for cookware, um, you know, 10 second spiel. Because, you know, who, who's had it when you, when a customer comes up, you tell them about cookware flatware and like, oh, shoot, we just bought a new set of flatware cookware last year, right? I hate that. So I want to make sure that they know, all my customers know now that we have cookware, we have flatware. And hey, Mr. Jones, Christmas is right around the corner. <laughs> so if you need good gifts for your kids, grandkids, nieces, nephews, make sure you think about Cutco, Right. So worst case, make sure you just at least mention it to every customer every single time. That's why that wish list line is so key at the end when you get them sold on knives, right? Like, hey, Mr. Jones, so just so I know, what are some things you want me to put on your wish list for down the road? Gadgets, cookware, flatware. Then when they put it on there, if they mention like, yeah, you know, we, we could use some good pots and pans, I may ask them, cool. And then just so I know, when would you be thinking about upgrading your pots and pans, 
right? If they say like, you know, three or four years down the road, don't even mention it. But if they're like, oh, probably within the next year or so, then I'll say, okay, cool. Well, hey, um, you might as well learn about it now so that when it comes time for you to buy it, we don't have to go through the pitch anymore. Is that cool? And then I'll say, hey, sure. So then I'll give my cookware spiel and then I'll show them the price and everything. So I'm like, so just so you know, like, you know, now you know, this is what the prices are. But if you were to bundle it with your knives, you'll get a bundle discount. And then I'll pause and I'll look at them because they know what I'm getting at, right? So I'm going to let them tell me, all right, Vernon, what's the bundle discount? Or they'll say, no, we can't, we can't. I'm like, all right, no worries. And then sometimes I'll be like, even if it was like really, really good, <laughs> you know, because worst case, they'll say no, right? But best case, they're like, oh, fine, what is it? Okay. So, and then, and then you're in, right? So just show them what the regular bundle deal is. So they see like the retail value, like this is what you'll spend over time if you do end up waiting. But Cutco has an amazing bundle discount. So this is what it is right here. Five pays this right here. And then you can either just try to close it right there or to say, and then what I'll do is I'll do, you know, A, B, and C, okay? And then you may, you know, like I said, accidentally add on some other things. One of the last things I'll mention is, um, I mentioned before how you need to listen to your customers, right? So when I was working the UP State Fair last summer, a customer comes up and she already wants to buy, you know, like a homemaker set from one of her kids. And she said a simple phrase of, yeah, I want to buy at least one, okay? And so I heard at least one, which means, oh, she probably wants more. So then I asked one of my favorite questions, well, in a perfect world, how many would you have? And I think she said like three or four, right? So I gave her a deal on three or four, boom, one homemaker turned into three or four, right? Simple thing, but just making, but just make sure that you're present with your customers and you're listening to them, okay? Um, you know, we eventually want to get this. We eventually want to do that, right? Well, hey, you might as well learn about it now so that when we are ready for it, we don't have to go through the pitch anymore, which you probably want to do anyway, right? But obviously it just makes sense in the moment, okay? So just be a student of the business and, you know, just be disciplined in learning how to do these things. And then when you are working with the CSP in your area, like sneak your phone like under them and just press record and just, you know, boom, right? Here you go, right? And then next thing you know, you hear like myself or Matt or, you know, Kevin or Sam or Nick pitch upgrades or cookware or whatever. Something else you might consider doing is also reaching out to, to the CSPs, asking them when their uh, sharpening events are and volunteering to be their sharpener. Right. So you sharpen all their knives, but then you get free training by listening to them because guess what? They're going to be pitching every single time. Upgrades for sure. 100 percent. OK. And you're probably going to hear one of us pitch about cookware and flatware, business gifts, right? So I do that for Brandon Brown. Uh, I say I, I used to, like before COVID, I would go out, watch him work this one day festival, and then I'd be his sharpener for one of his sharpening events and like see him sell like six grand on like six orders, right? It's just ridiculous, okay? So reach out to your P to, to your CSPs in your area or some you want to learn from, but like, hey, can I, be your, can I be a sharpener at one of your upcoming sharpening events and do some field training? right? Or if we don't have an event going on one weekend, pull up the schedule and be like, hey, Kevin, can I come see you guys work, right? Or this weekend, you got like me, Caden, uh, and Sam working in Milwaukee, right? If you're not doing anything, ask us if you can come field train. Why not? Okay. So that's basically what I got. Um, does anyone else have any other questions, comments, want to do any like quick role playing or unless Tuck uh, you have something else going on or on, on the agenda. Sure, someone's got a question. Soak it up while you can. It's not every uh, every day we get burning on here. That's right. Take it all in. Side note, I for those that don't know, I mentored with Vernon uh, for two years. Uh, so... So, hey, Vernon, I, I had a quick question. Um, it's Josh Gort here. What's up, um, Josh Gort? JG, up, man? Um, so, one, this is probably more for the group, but how are you figuring out your package pricing and how much are you discounting it? 
Um, cause you tell the customer five to 25% off, but like, are you taking a massive hit on CPO or what are you doing to position that where it, where it makes sense and still win-win? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, no, I'm definitely not butchering my, my CPO. Um, so I use Cutco's discounts as to five to 25% off. Okay. This is a whole nother tangent because this is something I'm super passionate in. Um, sometimes I do discount Cutco, but it's not crazy. Like if you're B blocking for like block sets, homemakers, signatures, whatever, stop. Okay. Quick example. If you B block a homemaker set, you didn't actually sell a homemaker set. You actually sold a five piece in a block because it's the same CPO. Okay. Don't do that. Here's why. All right. Uh, when you ask people how much they spent on Cutco, no matter if they had it for three years or 30 years, they never remember. They, you know, they, they only remember two things. It was really expensive and it was worth it. Right. Or they'll give a general number like, oh, yeah, it's probably like 500 bucks. It's probably $1,100. I don't know. I just remember it was really expensive. Okay. It was worth it. Right. Of course. So, no, I used the built in like already cut go discounts for the five to 25 percent off. OK, and then I usually explain to customers like, hey, just so you know, Cutco sets the prices. So even if I take a dollar off, that 100 percent comes out of my pocket, which I'm fine with doing because I want to earn your business, but I can't obviously pay you to buy Cutco. Right. So then depending on what it is, it might be like seventy five dollars off or one hundred and fifty dollars off. So then when I tell them that I will personally take one hundred and fifty dollars off, they know that's coming out of my pocket. OK, um, and that's why some people will will do the gadgets like, hey, would you rather me? Uh, so like no, now knowing all this, would you rather have a personal discount for me or would you rather have extra bells and whistles for free? Sometimes people like that because no matter which way you do it, it's going to be expensive either way. So sometimes customers are like, you might as well get more bang for your buck. Right. So then, you know, most people will do gadgets Some people still do discounts. Nice, nice. And then uh, one other question I'm in, um, or I guess two questions, because I feel like you're really good at, I, I don't know if the, the right word is attracting high quality customers to the booth, but it, it's like you, it seems like you can identify when you have a huge opportunity in front of you, right? So it's like, and then you're maximizing that opportunity. So one, just you know, what can you do to more recognize that? And then the second question, you talked about like the wish list and building that, but like, what's your best transition into upselling that uh, package? Yeah. Like if they add it. Great questions. Um, so for the first one, it's funny because we say like, don't prejudge, but we actually prejudge all the time right? And you actually do want to prejudge, but there's a smart way to prejudge, okay? So um, you prejudge by kind of pre-qualifying. So I made it a discipline to always pre-qualify every single customer, all right? I'm sure we've all had it where that customer comes up and they say all the right stuff. Oh my gosh, my knives suck. Oh, wow, th this is amazing. I need this stuff at home. Oh my gosh, I would love Cutco, right? And then I would do my whole spiel and then it would say, well, thanks for the info. I appreciate it. You know, see you later. <laughs> right. Or, you know, they would be like, oh, no, there's I can't. There's no way I can do this today. I'm like, well, what, what the heck just happened? Right. So, <clears throat> you know, I always pre-qualify a customer every single time. And it's my goal to just build a lot of value in Cutco and make it seem really, really expensive. Because I don't know about you, but like I like buying expensive things because it, that usually means that it's quality. Right. So I tell my customers from the jump, um, you know, I tell them that it's America made, guaranteed forever, whatever, right? So something else I got from Brandon, you know, I tell them like, cool. So just to rip off the Band-Aid, individually, you're looking at 100 to $200 per knife. So if you're looking a la carte, it's about 150 bucks per knife, give or take, right? And then our sets range, and then our sets range from about 600 bucks up to $4,000 retail. Now what's great, 
if uh, you're, is what's great is that you're seeing me here. Okay, we're not sold in stores in a traditional sense. Um, and we're only here for the next few days, day and a half, five hours, whatever. So our customers are saving between five and 25% off our current retail prices. Okay, so if you're all looking for a really good set of knives, this is the this is definitely one of the best times to, to get it. And then, you know, then I ask them, which I'm sure a lot of you do. So, uh, you know, could you use a quality set of knives today? Or would you, you know, would you consider upgrading your knives or whatever? Okay. Um, but then I also ask them, cool. So, you know, just curious if we found like the perfect option for you, whether it was a few pieces or a set, and you could fit it in the budget, right? Or it was at a price point that you could fit in the budget. Is that something that you'd be open to considering getting today? So they know that the average price point is about 150 bucks. They know that the sets range from 600 to $4,000. And they know that we have specials between five and 25% off, right? So basically when I, when I ask them, like when I tell them all that, and then I ask them, that last question and they say yes, to me, I have a sale. So I just need to find out what they want, okay? And then I just feel like um, I do a really good job at, at my three set clothes and just like framing the sets in a really good way so that when they pick the set that they want, it's either they're basically gonna buy it or I'm just gonna basically drop down to a smaller set or a five piece, okay? So then like I'm building up how Cutco has these discounts. I'm building up how like you get what you pay for, okay? I'm also just very honest with my customers, Josh. So like uh, last weekend, the customer literally asked me that the homemaker with flatware, she literally asked me like, is this just for this weekend? And I said, no, you could literally call me in three weeks and I would give you the same deal, okay? But obviously I would love to earn your business today. Or sometimes I'll say, you know, and if people actually did that, I wouldn't need to invest thousands of dollars in my booth and pay thousands of dollars to be here. I'll just need a little four foot table with some catalogs and business cards, knowing that people would call me a week later. And then they would laugh and kind of like kind of nod their head because they know that doesn't happen. Right. So then, you know, I tell them, like, obviously, I would love to earn your business while you're here with me today. Okay, right. So, if I, you know, if I went out of my way, did something a little extra special for you, would you consider, would you consider going for it? And usually they say yes. Okay. So that's how I uh, pre-qualify the customers. And I also do my, be my best not to prejudge. I almost did this at the Wisconsin um, uh, sports show. No, maybe it was another sports show in Madison. And um, like the whole weekend, it was, it was trash. And then the last like hour and a half, I think I sold like six grand or something like that. And one of them was an ultimate to a lady I, I first prejudged. Another one was, uh, I think, an 11 piece to a younger couple that I almost prejudged, okay? But I just told myself, just play all out, go full out with them, and then boom, right? I like quadrupled my sales. And then, um, then oh, so, and then your next question, Josh, with the wish list. So when I ask them at the very end, you know, is there anything you want me, you would want me to put on your wish list for down the road? And then let's say, like, if it's like a pair of shears, um, and if they're splitting it up over five months, I was like, oh, I mean, since this is the only thing, the, the only thing left on your wish list, you want to just add it on. It's just an extra like 30 bucks. Right. Uh, but if it's like flatware or cookware, I'll ask them, cool. And then just so I know, uh, when do you see yourself doing this? Like, when would you see yourself like upgrading your flatware or your cookware? Right. And then again, if it's like years on the road, I'll probably just, um, you know, I won't even go into it, but if it's like within the next year, year and a half, then I'll say, cool, well, um, you know, I might as well just quickly tell you about it now so that when you are ready for it, you're already educated on it. You don't, you don't need to go through it again. And like, yeah, that's fine. So then I'll do my pitch. Um, I'll make it sound like really expensive. So with flatware, when they ask how much it is, I tell them this is a $2,600 set. Okay. And this is a great way to qualify people if they're specifically asking about flatware. Because after you say the $2,600, they're either going to basically walk away or they're going to stand there and be like, oh, okay, nice. That tells you you got a quality customer in front of you, okay? Um, same with the cookware. I tell them like the cookware is one of my favorite things that we sell. It's also our most expensive thing that we sell. So like the knives are between $100 and $200 a knife. They, all the cookware pieces have five layers of, of metal in there. So which one's going to be more expensive? The cookware, right. 
then so the cookware is between 200 and 600 dollars per per piece so a la carte is roughly 400 dollars okay so then when they pick like the basic set there's 12 pieces in there you know 400 times 12 is 4800 dollars i'm like yeah so any other like west bend cookware this is like a five thousand dollar set so then when they see like the retail value of that set is $2,600 and then the corporate discount beyond that is $2,200 or whatever it is. We're like, wow, this is like cheap, right? Not nearly as much as what I thought it would be, okay? So I basically just, you know, pitch it. I give them the price. I kind of let it marinate there. And then I say, so now you know about it. You know the price, you know why it's so good. I can send you info on it. And just so you know, the more you get, the better deal I can give you. So if you were to bundle this on to what you're already getting, the deals get pretty awesome. And I'll basically just say some version of that because I'm going to let them tell me what I need to do next. So if they tell me, all right, what, what's the deal? Then I'll just do the normal like cutco bundle, see where they're at. And if they're like, no, there's no way we can do this, then, then I'll just leave it be. But if they're like on the edge, then I'm like, okay, well, like I said, Cutco sets the prices, you know, but if I do something a little extra special for you, would you maybe go for it, right? And then if they're bundling it, that's when I'll like, you know, buy the kitchen tool set. Or again, I like buy them extra Cutco. Does that answer your, your two questions, Josh? Yeah, thank you. Of course. Who else has a question? Don't be shy. No such thing as dumb questions. I just want to say it was fire, fire response. Fire response. Appreciate it. All right. <clears throat> I have a question. So I have a lot of old leads and customers that I haven't been good at reaching out to. Like I just sold to them and I never followed up with them, reached back out to them. Um, what would be your advice on the best way for me to start building my business there um, and really trying to stay in contact with my customers more and not just like running by the track but moving on the train with it so like me? I don't know. so do you mean specifically how to build your business from like your your customer database right now yeah one yeah. talk to your brother okay yes he, he kind of knew what what he was doing <laughs> um, <laughs> um second you just got to run it like a full-time job so you know, when all I was doing was demos and service calls, um, one of my standards was basically making 100 calls a week, whether that was like I would go into my office Saturday mornings for Rising Star, and then after Rising Star, I'd make 100 calls, or every morning I would make, you know, 20 to 30 calls, you know, Monday through Friday, and, um, you know, do 10 plus appointments, right? Or if you have a, a bunch of pink sheets from, from your office, I would type all, all the leads into a spreadsheet, right? And then I would just, you know, phone through that. Um, Nick Snyder and I used to do this together where we would like print off our customer list at the beginning of every year. We would organize them by, by city or area. And then we would have, um, we would um, organize them from highest CPO on down, right? So like, you know, we're calling our best customers first. Okay, so if, if, if it's been, since you're like newer, uh, it, as long as it's been like at least a year, right? Then just call them like, hey, Mr. Jones, this is your cuckoo guy, Joey. How are you doing today? Great, All right? Build some rapport, blah, blah, blah. And just tell them like, yeah, I'm just calling for your annual cuckoo checkup. Just want to see how everything's going, blah, blah, blah. Um, you saw it on your fingers, great. Uh, well, hey, just so you know, I know your cuckoo is really sharp. We just recommend getting them touched up every one to three years, just kind of how you need an oil change every, you know, 3,000, 6,000 miles. Um, just as a maintenance procedure. And basically all I do, I come on over, sharpen up your knives for free, show you some co cool new stuff. Obviously, if there's anything that you want, I'll give you a great deal. But if you get something great, if not totally cool, you know, I'm in and out usually uh, with, with, within an hour. And I'm actually going to be in your area already this week doing some other sharpenings. So I just wanted to see if you also wanted to get a free sharpening in as well. Right. Um, so that's what I would do. Just run it like a full-time job nine to five, you know, 10 to six, whatever you want to do. And when you are working events, your goal should be, we, you know, we've mentioned this before, your goal should be show up to your events with your events already paid for through your service, through your uh, appointments. 
Does that answer your question? Yes. That was and awesome. the great thing with like service calls, Joey, is that it's basically the past customer approach, right? Basically upgrades. And then same thing with all the programs. The reason why like my appointments take like two hours is because I go through like every single program, right? But that's why I have a really good average order on my service calls and demos because I talk about every single program. So, but, you know, focus on the past customer approach and then really focus on referrals, Joey. And that's how you always have a healthy book of business. Does that make sense? Yes. Awesome. That was awesome. Thank you, Vernon. Of course. Jack Weiss, you're the only one who hasn't asked me a question. <laughs> Um, I don't have any questions. I'm just like getting started with service calls. So right now I'm just absorbing everything. Cool. So yeah. Are you a uh, service call trained? I am. Beautiful. So I actually plan on starting service calls within like the next week or two. You plan on starting service calls or you are starting service calls? Well, I, I am starting service okay, calls within good. the next good. week or two. Good. The next week or two or like the next week? Really like the next week, I was talking to Sebastian and he was telling me to go field training with Tucker Bryan first before I get started. So they kind of know what they're doing. Yeah. Yeah, I'll definitely go watch them. Um, and that would be a perfect opportunity, depending on your on your your schedule to reach out to the CSPs like you saw in the group chat, a bunch of people are doing a service center in Brookfield coming up. So I would literally be like, a sharpener for one of them or just ask them, can I just circle around and watch all y'all? I would 100% do that if your schedule allows it um, or see if you can arrange your schedule so you can make that happen, okay? Um, and same thing, just like I told Joey, work it like a business. I wasn't phenomenal at the job when I was like starting off, I just worked. And then eventually my skills got better, you know? So you're learning a lot of things with these awesome calls. So it's easy to like, overthink things, put a lot of pressure on yourselves. Like I got to be a master when I show up to Mr. Jones's house. But at the same time, like it's super easy to sell Cutco, right? If you're in their house, uh, bring some knives with you, have them get a, get a potato, right? Have them cut a potato with a cheese knife, you'll sell a cheese knife, right? You can be the queen or king of cheese knives for the next few weeks. It really doesn't matter, okay? Because eventually you'll get there and doing uh, upgrades and a cookware because you're going to be seeing these customers for a long time right so just have fun with them okay so just work it like a business because what you don't want to have happen is you know you don't work it like a business then the business isn't working well for you because you weren't working it you end up leaving and then a csp in your area sucks up your customers and sells a bunch of upgrades and cook from flower town exactly you see you see tuck hugging them because that's what happens right i love it when jason has reps that fall off because those are all mine now. Thank you. Thank you, rep. That worked for three weeks. Appreciate it. That's probably why Seth came back because he didn't want Vernon to sell to all his customers. So just sold a flatware chest to somebody who uh, who sold their, their parents a homemaker last year. So see, there you go. So it's like, are you going to be that, you know, um, yeah, I bought I bought my knives from some college kid X amount of years ago, or are they going to say, oh, yeah, I bought it from from uh, Jay Quiz. I brought it from Joey. Yeah, that's my rep. I love him. Anything else? I actually had one more question. Oh boy. <laughs> so <laughs> uh, I actually just invested in Vast Action, uh, I think last week to get the, the CRM. Nice. And I was just kind of wondering uh, how many customers you think would it be good to have that uh, emailing service that kind of lets them know about specials and deals? Because I've had a couple of customers uh, reach or like talk to me after I sell to them. They're like, oh yeah, let me know when you got a promotion or a deal going on. I'd love to catch up with you on that. Yeah, I mean, the, the, the great thing about the program is it's, it's not expensive, like at all. It's like, I don't know, what, a hundred bucks a month, something like that. So it's $120. No, was that $1,200 for, for the year? So it's like, if you sell a flat worth chest, you just paid for your whole year's program, right? From that email. So just do it. Um, if you want to sell more Cutco and invest in something that costs money, that's going to force you to sell more Cutco, right? Do it, you know, smart way, right? Obviously, but it's like, all right, I'm, I'm investing 1200 bucks in this program or whatever it is. So I better make sure that when I have a sale going out, I'm calling my customers 
letting them know I got the sale going on. So I would just do it. Awesome. Thank you. Can I, can I piggyback on that? Of course. Yeah. And I, and I would say the marketing helps set up the sales. Like if you just wanted to run a sale at a certain point and you just sent out a sale, then your customers are going to think, Hey, they're only reaching out to me when they want to sell stuff. But if you're adding value, adding value, adding value, and then asking for a sale, the sale is even more effective. Yeah. So it just has multiple air effect. Are you talking and like you, uh, service calls as well, or like uh, trucking like in your area? Stuff. Just like the the monthly emails you send. Gotcha. Yeah, and you you could always design your own, but it's like the value of your time, right? To design your own email and set it up when you could just pay fast action, like. I don't know what it is, 50 bucks or hundred bucks to do it. Sometimes it, uh, it's just the easiest way to do it. Plus yeah. they will do a better job for sure. I oh, used yeah. to do my own, they do a better job. <laughs> yeah, and I would definitely make sure that you market to every single event that you do. Um, and if you are doing a service events, obviously you need to market to that. But if you're doing service calls, you could, you could send out like a service call generator. And you could talk to Vast Action about that. So you could literally send out a survey and say, hey, let me know if you need your knife sharpened and I'll pick a time to come to your house and do it. And then boom, maybe you'll have 20, 30, 40, 50 people like, yeah, I need my knife sharpened. Now you got 50 people who like want to sharpen it. So if you are, for those of you that are doing service calls, like I told Joey, like really focus on referrals. Really focus on referrals. So you always have a healthy book of business. Have your customers tag you in a Facebook post, right? And then follow up with every single person that, 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 that comments on that. Side note. Your, does that answer your question, Seth? Yeah, thank you guys. I appreciate it. Anything else? So Vernon, I'm curious, uh, at this point for you, how are you discerning who you're going to do a service call for versus who you're going to send to a service event and then typically how many appointments or service events do you do on an average week at this point yeah so when i was newer um i basically did what i mentioned to joey like every year i would basically call through all my customers and i would travel all around the state of wisconsin so i would have you know, I, I could obviously do my own area like whenever, but then I would have a Milwaukee day. I would have a Madison day. You know, I would have a Waukesha day, whatever. Um, and then some days I literally have like six appointments in one day because when I was doing service calls, I told them like, I'm only going to be in Milwaukee like literally this day. And I would call like, you know, at least two weeks in advance, but they knew that they had to like make their schedule around that because I told them like, I don't know when I'm going to be in the area again. I live two hours away from you. Right. So like, all right, cool. You can come over, you know, two o'clock this day or whatever. So I was doing that, you know, definitely every year, building my book of business, calling a bunch of pink sheets as well. When I was going to events, making sure I'm getting like leads for, for service calls and like even direct scheduling them on uh, in, in my schedule as well. Another reason why events are, are amazing. But then over time, um, you know, when you get thousands and thousands of customers, which obviously takes like years to build, I didn't want to continue to travel like all over Wisconsin anymore. So one service events do allow me to work less, but then um, I opened up a service center last year. Right. So now um, I have a Calendly, which is just an on like a scheduling app that uh, I have my schedule availability for at least a campaign or a quarter uh, ahead. And I send that to, to my, my customers. I have my own website that I made last year as well. So it's always on my website. So then they just schedule whenever they want. So I'm at the point now where I'm not really, I, I'm, not, I'm not doing service calls. I had a lady ask me the other day, like, do you come to the house anymore? I'm like, no, not really. Um, so because I'm doing, I have my service center. I don't want to drive all over Wisconsin. And, and during the week, I'm either hanging, hanging out with my wife, hanging out with friends, or I'm working the, my, my CGC and business gift layer. And then I'm doing my service events. And then for service events, uh, what Brandon does and what I do, I only market to people that haven't gotten service with within at least uh, two years. 
so that it, it builds a little more urgency um, to, to see me, right? Because the thought I want them to have is, oh, I haven't seen Vernon. Uh, well, Vernon hasn't mentioned he's going to be servicing my area in at least a couple of years. I better schedule something now because who knows when he'll be in the area again, right? Um, but other CSPs like Nick, for example, he does it to every customer every single time. And our service event stats are basically the same, right? So you can do it however you want to um, structure your, your business. So even with like my service center and having it to where my customers just schedule it, I probably, you know, I only average maybe a couple a week. Um, but they usually go really, really, uh, really, really well. And now I'm only driving, you know, like 15 minutes, um, you know, for, for a service call, but now they can see everything in person, which really helps as well. Like last week I had a lady come up and, you know, it's all, it's that typical story of like, I told my husband, I wasn't going to buy anything, but then I saw your cookware. I'm like, gosh, darn it, Vernon. And she bought the whole cookware set. Right. <laughs> So, um, so it just makes it nice. And I tell my customers, like, now you can see everything in person versus just flipping through a book. But when I was newer in the business, and what I would highly recommend, you know, the three of you to do is still work your business. Because again, like, I didn't have all this until like, I was a Hall of Famer. Okay. So build your book of business, you should be doing like 10, 15, 20 appointments a week, and then get to the point where like five years later, seven years later, you could be where like I'm at or whoever else is at, right? So you should ask yourself like, picture yourself 10 years from now, what do you want your cuckold business to look like? Even if you're not gonna be here 10, 10 years from now, what do you want your business to look like? Okay, and then you have to backtrack to see how you need to get there, okay? So for example, I know for me, um, within five years, really, but, you know, best case scenario, 10 years, I want to go from working 30 events to 10 events. And I want to know that every event that I work at, I'm selling at least 10 grand. And ironically, last year, my top 10 events were all 10 grand and higher. And I want to be able to supplement my smaller events for business gifts and realtor gifts, which is why now you're seeing me pop off a bunch of like business gifts and realtor gifts, because five to 10 years from now, I want to be able to only work 10 events. And so selling at a high level, and uh, again, to supplement the smaller events are my business gift orders and realtor orders, right? But obviously, up until then, I'm working 30 plus events, probably like every year, because you have to build up to that. Does that answer your question, Matt? Cool. Sure. <clears throat> what else we got? Got, who's got a last uh, last burning question? No such thing as stupid questions, just stupid people. So. <laughs> well, and, that's and okay. If, okay. I was going to say, if anyone has a uh, question, come to mind, pop up down the road. How can they uh, how can they reach out to you, Vernon? Uh, follow me on Twitch. Um, no, it's fine. Uh, <laughs> um, all of y'all should should have my number, so you can text me or just message me on Facebook or or Instagram. However you want. Also, uh, I think Vern's got a a. a uh, revamped mentorship program in the works so stay tuned on that for those of you looking to up level uh, i do i appreciate that matt um so yes um i'll be talking to the the, the dvm soon but pretty much is for newer and up and coming csps who want to have a breakthrough in, in their business pretty much anyone that wants to have their first 100 200 300k plus year um and teaching them how to do that. Uh, and it's an investment, right? But like I said earlier, if you want to sell more, invest in something that's going to make you sell more and get you a return on your investment. Ever since my first year selling full time, I've been coaching with Brandon Brown. And my first year that I coached with him, I paid him $800 a month. 
and this was when I was broke. Like it was, it's my, it was my first time getting my own apartment. Um, later, I think later that year is my first time getting like a, a, a car note. Um, and yeah, it, it, it definitely hurt me, but I had my first hundred K year and then I grew every, every year, um, after that. Right. So I always tell people like invest in a mentor. It's the best investment you can make in this business. That's why Matt is so good at his job right now. <laughs> yeah, we, we, uh, you know, the three CSPs on this call are probably putting, I don't know, combined hundred thousand plus in the, into, uh, improving ourselves. Oh well, yeah. At least I think I did the numbers and, uh, I think ever since I started selling full time, I've, I've invested about seventy five thousand dollars in mentoring. Right. And it's worth it because he makes fucking excuse me, uh, <laughs> damn near a quarter million dollars last year. So, right. Mike Muriel says if you invest a hundred thousand dollars and you made a hundred and one thousand dollars, right? That was a good investment. Or what was that? Hundred thousand and one dollar. That was a good investment. So sure. I talked to some people and they're like, oh, I don't know if I want to pay that. I'm like, well, I pre-qualified. I'm like, well, then this isn't going to work because you're, you're not taking your growth seriously. Pretty much what, what the conversation is. No matter what you do, you're, you're either paying with money or time. So exactly. Because think about it, like with Cutco, even at $800, right? It's like, even if you're at, you're at 30% without any bonuses, right? Then it's like, okay, how do I sell an extra $2,500 this month? And you just break it down. If you're not in school, you're not working another job, you make more calls and do more demos. Boom. There you go. A job works if you work, literally. All of you know my story. Literally, all of you know my story, okay? And you've, you've heard me say this time and time again, okay? If there is a picture of, you know, I can do this. If I can do this, you can do this. I would be the face. I would love to see if anyone else in the history of Becker has, has my story. $500 the first summer and now it's a Hall of Famer. I highly, highly doubt that. Okay. And even when I came back to Cutco, I was, I was trash. I quit the events team the first time because I was trash. When I came back, I was still trash. But I just worked on my craft and kept showing up. So if you work the job, it'll work for you. I promise. Anything else? Rome was not built in a day, people. Sweet. Um, well, just want to respect your time, Vern. I appreciate you coming on, delivering the goods, giving the people what they want, what they need. Um, and those of you who are listening to the recording, uh, make sure you send Vern a you know, thank you. Uh, for giving such a great message and the best way that you can thank vernon by the way is to after this call post in the group me uh, your top takeaway or takeaways uh, and what you plan on imp implementing from this call so um that's a, the best way to appreciate your speaker so yeah and um you know make sure you thank tuck for for putting on these calls i didn't have these calls when i was coming up in the business okay so, you know, Nick and, uh, and Tuck made this happen. So if you want to get better at your job, come on, these, come on these calls and take obviously good notes, but then plan time in your schedule to review the notes and implement it, right? Because you're learning from the top people in, in, in our events team and probably other, other guest speakers too. So, you know, Caden talked about finding new events. So if you're sick and tired of like, you know, all the CSPs taking the good events, find your own events and then build them to tier one events. Okay. Um, so implement, you know, the things that you're, that you're listening, continue to be on these calls, treat this like Cutco University, basically treat it like a class. And if you implement the things that you're learning, you will get better at, at your job. It's pretty simple. Okay. Yeah, I appreciate you guys. Um, if you need anything, you know how to get a hold of me. Keep doing, you know, keep keep up the, the great work. Tuck, thanks again for having these calls. And uh, um, we'll, we'll see you guys soon. Sounds good. Well, have a, uh, a blessed night, everybody. Also, next call in two weeks, uh, going to be back on Wednesday again. 
Um, I'm going to be speaking on uh, listening to your customers and basically the psychology of working with, uh, with clients. So definitely want to tune in for that. And uh, if you know somebody who should have been on this call, reach out to them. I know there's a few people who reached out, couldn't make it for different reasons, but bring a friend to the call and uh, yeah, we'll see you on the next one. See you guys. Have a good night. Everybody. Thanks guys. See you.